Hey, welcome to the channel. Let's get into today's video. Why I've upgraded my shoulder rig to a new shoulder rig. Come right back. By the way, I did buy this shoulder rig with my own money. So this is my unbiased first impressions look at this rig. This is the Hondo Garage pop and lock mini shoulder rig. And it's really designed for rugged use and run and gun and putting in a backpack. It collapses down really, really tight. The sad part is they don't make these anymore. I love this thing, but it's got a few things that I haven't liked for other kinds of shoots. But when I'm doing something more stationary, I want something to look a little bit more professional, I guess you could say, in front of some clients. This is my brand new Nicey Rig shoulder rig. Now I've just bought this. So really to be fair, this is kind of my first impressions video. This one, I'm gonna be attaching my monitor to it, more things onto it. And the Hondo Garage is more running gun lightweight. So I wanted something a little bit more heavy duty to carry more weight. So this is the one I went for. And there are some reasons why I chose this one over other ones that are on the market. If you're looking at getting one of these rigs and it's got the 15 millimeter rod system, don't get one where the handles clamp right onto the rod. You just can't get them tight enough. Just read the reviews. Everybody complains about those kind of systems. No matter how hard you tighten it, you can't cinch it down. This one has a base plate that goes onto the rod and then it uses an RE mount system here that really locks in. And if you've ever used these, they have teeth, so they just go into position and it locks in place super solid and it's just not gonna come off. This one came with a 12 inch rod here, which I really didn't think was gonna be long enough for me. I mean, I would have been like this trying to look at my camera. I bought another eight inch piece to extend it. So I've now got 20 inches. And for me, that's about the perfect fit. You may have a different style fit or what feels comfortable for you. This one came with a flush mount system right in here. So I actually bought a riser. I don't know if you can see that, but it's this piece right here. I actually bought a riser just to lift it up a little bit and get my camera up a little higher for comfort when I'm using it. Adding that riser also makes it easier to fit my Manfrotto quick mount because it does protrude down at the bottom here. So I just add that and I can get stuff off really fast and easy to use on all my different gear that uses this same system. This one also has this really nice shoulder mount. It's actually gel, but then it's covered by a fabric. I really prefer these kind to any products that is just straight rubber, because as you're sitting that down in nature in the wild, that rubber can get chipped and it starts to crack. This one is much better for outdoor use is what I find. The other thing is, and this might be something that you might not think of, but I've often been caught over the years trying to film a lot of stuff in slow motion. I think sometimes I do too much slow motion. I wanna shoot more stuff in real time, which is not always super easy to do if you handhold. This will allow me to get a little more smoother shots. Now you can see how much smoother this looks. This is at real time. Just easier to do it. And of course, with the embody of the GH5, it just adds to that. So that's one of the reasons why I want to start using this more, just to get smoother shots handheld. And this subject is not always easy to talk about, but the sad reality is sometimes we have to look really, really professional in our shoots for some clients. And certainly when you rig all this out, instead of just hand holding a camera, you can look really professional on set. And that's just something as you advance in your career, you'll probably get more conscious of with the type of clients that you're attracting. And lastly, I'd really like to address this subject about if you even need a shoulder rig. I haven't used one very much throughout my years. I'm just now getting into some work where I think I could use one. My advice is don't run out there and buy, to sh buy a shoulder rig right at the beginning because you may not need it. Buy stuff that you absolutely need and understand that the type of work you're doing calls for a shoulder rig. Sometimes I get customers that like that little handheld look. So we don't want everything to always be smooth for every shot. That's just my quick tip on a shoulder rig. And if you need one and why I bought one,
Gosh, and I forgot. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe, hit like, and we'll see you in the next video.